Hey, it's Onesto, and today I'm covering all the new features inside of Neutron 4. Isotopes, they updated a lot. They updated the mix assistant and his workflow. There's a new unmask module, which is super useful, a new compressor mode called Punch, and a few other features that I'm really excited to show you. So let's start off with the biggest change in Neutron, which is the assistant view. We're gonna hang out here for a while because this is the most important thing you need to know about. Neutron 4's assistant is pretty similar to Track Enhanced from Neutron 3. It uses machine learning as it listens to your audio, and then it gives you a great starting point. However, Neutron 4, they add a control center where you can make some big, broad tweaks to personalize your results. Let me show you how it works. I have Neutron 4 on this guitar. But I want to see what Neutron 4 will do with it. So I'm going to click the assist button here and just let Neutron 4 do its thing, which means I just play some audio. All right, so here's what we have. Let's compare that to the before. after. All right, cool. The change is really subtle, but we're going to push it a little bit more as we mess with these controls here. So what we see here are four controls that represent four big and fundamental decisions you make whenever you mix. You have tone shaping right here. You have dynamics, character, and stereo image. These controls are pretty much macros that control what's happening inside of Neutron's modules. So the next step is to go through these and start dialing in our sound. So when it comes to tone shaping, we see that it's detected the sound source right here. It's labeling it as a guitar, so it detected it correctly. That's great. And based off the guitar category, we have a tone curve target. So the orange section shows a range of that target tone curve. And the white line here, this is representing our audio. This is the guitar that's going into it. The idea is that you want your audio to hang out around this orange section. It doesn't have to be dead center of the orange, just, just around here more or less. So let me unmute this real quick. So if you want Neutron to push the audio closer to that tone curve, just bring up the tone match. If you want it to stray away from the tone curve, just bring it down. So I'm gonna push it up right here. Cool, I'm looking right there. And if you're wondering what this tone match section controls, it's acting as a macro of the intensity uh, module. So I'll bring it down to 0%, and we'll go to Sculptor. Let's see how that's 0% right there. Okay, the next control is Punch right here. This, uh, this is making decisions on the dy dynamics of my sound here. So by bringing down the macro, we're gonna add more compression, see how squeezing the audio, more compression, the sustains will be more pronounced. If we increase it, is acting more as an expander, so the transients will come through more. So let's see uh, where I want it to be. I kind of want it up here. Cool. And this macro control, this is controlling the, um, the punch compressor under compressor two. And it's controlling the amount slider right here. I'm gonna talk a lot more about punch later, but let's just keep going. So now let's move on to the distort control. This is determining your audio's harmonic character. You can select classic mode, which is more tamed and subtle, or you can click trash, which is more about destroying your audio. And you can you know, drag this note here to blend between different distortion models. You can also use a tone slider to push the distortion towards a darker or towards a brighter sound. So let's take a listen and see where we want this to be. I'm definitely picking classic instead of the trash. It's not too bad. And by the way, this macro is controlling what's happening in the exciter. And then it's time to make a decision about the stereo width. This is pretty easy to understand. Uh, if you want it to go wider, drag it up. If you want the sound to be narrower, drag this down. Let's listen. I kind of want this to be narrow. Like right there. Cool. And this macro here is controlling the width control right here in the I.O. Okay, so let's see what we've done to this guitar. I'll bypass Neutron. Now unbypass it. I think the tone is too dark. Let me bring this up real quick. Yeah, I think I like that better. And I feel like I have to give a disclaimer. I'm, I have this guitar soloed, which is so unusual uh, when using Neutron. Usually when you're using Neutron, it's in the context of a full mix. So as I'm making these changes and adjustments, it's not really in response to a, a full mix. So uh, just know that as I'm making these changes, I, I'm just being very, very, very subjective here um, instead of actually having like an idea in mind. So I hope you see this demo as me like using the tools, demonstrating what they can do rather than like showing you how to mix something properly. Cool, I just feel like that was important to share. All right, there's one more feature that's been added to Neutron's 4 Assistant, and I really love this one, is the target library. 
With this, you can drop in a reference sample, a stem, or even a folder and tell the assistant to dynamically match your audio to the reference's tone. So instead of having to use these predetermined curves as good as they are, you can get a much more customizable and even desirable outcome. So in my case, I found this loop on Splice here. So I really like the tone of this Splice loop and I want my original guitar to sound more like it's trying to match that tone as much as possible. So let's see if Neutron 4 can help me out. So what I'm gonna do is click this button here, just the custom curve section. Click this plus sign. Great, here's my desktop. And then I'm gonna go scroll all the way down to my sample and open it up. So now we have a tone curve based off of a reference. So let's see, let's see what it does. Zero. Cool. Let's see. All right, now let's compare it. The reference with my sound. Okay, let's talk about my new favorite tool inside of Neutron 4, which is the Unmask module. This one is, is so good. As the name implies, the Unmask module is it's gonna dynamically fix your masking issues. For this demo, we'll take a look at a classic masking problem between a kick and a bass. This one's pretty intense, so uh, watch your ears. Yeah, so there's a lot of conflicting frequencies right there. So to fix this, place Neutron 4 or the Unmasculine module itself, like I have right here. Place it on the signal that you want to carve frequencies out of. I want the bass to get out of the way of the kick, so the Unmask module is on the bass track. Now what we'll do is route a side chain signal with the competing audio. In my case, it's the kick. So what I will do is find the kick right here. Bam, now there we go. And now when we play it, we see three lines here. I will mute these guys. Here we go, as I talk through these lines. So the gray line right here, uh, this is the input signal, it's, it's the bass. The purple line is the side chain signal, so in our case it's the kick, and this orange line represents where the unmasking is occurring. So I will unmute them now, and hear how it sounds. Bypass. Yeah, so everything in its way. Yeah. It sounds better and it was super, super easy. This is ridiculous. We have some controls here too that'll help things get even tighter and more transparent. So the amount controls how much unmasking is applied. The sensitivity that uh, determines how sensitive the unmasking detection is. And you're all familiar with attack and release here. You also have these frequency um, handles right here to help focus on a specific frequency range. So in this example, let's see. Cool, I would say like right here. So in this example, the biggest masking is happening in this range. So what I did, I just like clicked this and dragged to, to let the unmask ignore all these frequencies and just focus on the band right here. So here's here uh, before, after. Cool, I think it's actually too much here. All right, great, we'll, we'll just stick with that. So altogether, these controls are gonna help you get that unmasking to be as transparent as possible. If you're enjoying this video, please consider supporting the channel by liking this video. The more support this channel gets, the closer I get to making more content for you full time. And I think that'd be a whole lot of fun. Okay, moving on, it's time to talk about the new compressor mode um, called Punch. And Punch is kind of like an expander and compressor. So I'll demonstrate Punch on this drum loop right here. When punch is set to high, the transients are gonna be bigger and punchier. You can really hear that. And when it's set to low, we get compression. And the, the sustains almost feel bigger and more pronounced. I'm gonna set to like right here. And one cool thing about the compressor module is that it can be multi-band. And in each band, you can choose like how much or how little punch you want in all of them. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna click learn. Then what it's gonna do is like, automatically set where like natural multi-band should be occurring. And now I'm gonna go through and determine, I'm gonna solo and determine like what I want that punch level to be like. So like down here in the lows, I don't want anything to be going on. So I'll just like turn it off entirely. And the mids here, let's see. I think I want, yeah, I wanna exaggerate those sustains 
and then we're back up here in the highs. Yeah, there you go. Before. After. And as I've been using punch, uh, there's a couple things that I've noticed so far. One is that punch can be a little too much and almost unnatural sounding. And to fix that, I just drop down the mix slider of the compressor itself. So I'll listen in. Yeah, that sounds so much better to me for whatever reason. And all I did was just drop the mix slider. The last feature I want to show you is the trash mode in the exciter module. Trash is using some of the distortion modeling uh, that's from Trash 2, which is another great isotope plugin. And when using trash, you can distort, you can destroy your sounds and blend between uh, different trash models here. Let's check out the extreme distortion found in trash using this vocal example here. You know I gotta come back, huh? you know I gotta get the racks, huh? you know I gotta get them M's, huh? you know I'm never gonna slack. You know I gotta come back, huh? you know I gotta get the racks, huh? you know I gotta get them. So as you saw, this is a really easy module to use. This controls the uh, intensity of the distortion. I'm dragging the note around to blend between those different distortion models. And I found that if you wanna retain the tonal characteristics of your audio, then drag the node towards overdrive and the clipper here. You know I gotta come back, huh? you know I gotta get the racks, huh? you know I gotta... Yeah, so you see how you can, it, it sounds blown out, but you can still hear what it once sounded like. But if you wanna get more chaotic and destructive, then go towards scream and scratch. And of course, you can add up to three bands uh, to make it a multi band exciter. And there's two controls that will help shape the tone of the overall exciter module. The first is this tone slider down here. This is a global control for all of exciter. So if you want it darker, push it down. If you want it brighter, push it up. Uh, I'll just push it here for now. And then uh, this filter here, this affects the West signal and it rolls off any harsh frequencies in the high end. You know I gotta come back. Huh? You know I gotta get the racks. Huh? You know I gotta get them M's. Huh? You know I'm never gonna slack. The last thing I wanna point out in this video is the tame button right here in the exciter module. It's a tiny button, but it's so useful, especially when you're pushing audio through trash. You'll wanna try out the tame button because it's gonna preserve your audio's dynamics. Because distortion on its own, it, it compresses audio a ton, eliminating dynamics. But if you click tame, what it's trying to do is restore the dynamics of the original audio while still sounding distorted. So let me show you what I mean. I have this layer here. And what I added was trash and I have it on scratch and the drive like around 50%. And I want to hit play. I want you to pay attention to how it sounds when it reaches the end of this tail here. Yeah, you see, yes, it's really distorted and, and crazy and kind of awful sounding. But when it got here, it was almost like the exciter went away and the dry signal came back. I think that sounds a little sloppy, but now I'm going to click tame and let's listen to it. And once again, pay attention to the exciter when it hits this part. Yeah, you see how when, even when it hit this really quiet section, we were still able to hear the trash like really full and clearly. And I found that by using Tame, the distortion is applied evenly across all the dynamics, even at like tails or quiet parts of any audio they might have. So uh, if you're using Exciter, try using Tame. Um, I don't think you'll regret it. So those are all the new features inside of Neutron 4 to help you make your next mix easier and better. And there's a common mixing problem that I did not cover, which is removing harsh frequencies from your sound. To do this, I use another fantastic plugin called Soothe 2. If you wanna learn more about that, then click the video here. All right, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. It'll help other music makers find this channel later.